All right, so with that, we'll open it up for questions here, or sorry, we'll have uh, Coach, Coach Hoover start with an opening statement, and then uh, after that, open it up for questions. Well, I, first of all, I'd just like to thank all you guys for being here today and also for the coverage and, and just showing us a lot of love throughout the season, um, being there along every step of the way uh, means a lot. Um, you know, we're, we're extremely grateful to be here on arguably the biggest stage you know every little girl dribbling a basketball dreams of playing in the ncaa and and we're here and we've been here for a while now and you know these players uh that we brought to wake forest this is what they came here to do and so we're we're very appreciative of the city of san antonio um it's amazing it's, it's been a unique experience i've been to a few final a few uh tournaments before but to have all 64 teams in one location I can only imagine the logistical nightmares that has caused a lot of people, um, but the, the city of San Antonio has embraced it and are doing a great job keeping us all safe. We feel extremely safe. Um, they're really using every caution necessary to kind of keep us in moving in groups and, and away from any chance of um, you know exposing ourselves and and then the t to all the way into the testing and you know it's it's just. I, and I would have to say thank you to my staff, our administration, our support, our players for getting us to this moment. I mean, you guys know we have not had, knock on wood, quickly, one um, day where we've missed a game, a practice. We haven't had any positive tests, no quarantining, any of that kind of thing. And the amount of sacrifice that that takes on a whole is, is just uh, enormous. And, you know, I'm grateful to have the young ladies that I have in our program, but I'm grateful for my staff, the administration, the university and everything they did to also set us, set us up to be successful um, with navigating the COVID kind of protocol and everything that has to go with it. Um, you know, this team from day one has been about the process and about our goals and about being better, not the same. That's kind of one of our mottos we've used all year. And, and I told them again yesterday when we first took the court, we still have to be better today than we were when we left Greensboro. We can't be the same team that played Louisville that day and lost. We have to be, have gotten better at, you know, two, three things. And, and that's been our challenge over the week when we were at home kind of practicing and preparing for, we hoped what would be a wonderful journey was to, each kid had given me something they wanted to really commit to get better on and really just make a focus on for that week. And again, it was just a way to keep us in the moment, focused on the process of what we're here to do. Um, you know, we're excited to be here. It's been a kind of a crazy, it seems like we've been here forever. Um, but we haven't, you know, we got in on Wednesday and we were uh, quickly uh, into our rooms and, and then over for testing and then quarantined in our rooms for a day. But, you know, it's beautiful. Most of us have a balcony. We can go out. You can look over the river walk. So it wasn't like we were locked inside. Um, and, you know, and, and I think it's just it's been, a you know, a, an experience that it's a once in a lifetime experience that these kids, I think, I'll remember forever. And, and it might not be the same NCAA experience that you have every year, but it's also a unique one because again, all 64 teams are here. We've seen almost every ACC team that's here already. We've seen a lot of, a lot of these players have seen former AAU teammates that we've passed and testing and been able to wave to. And, you know, it's just unique for it to be, um, to be here at this point and to be here um, with all these other great teams and great players and great coaches. And, you know, we're excited to kind of get get going. We're super, you know, we got, we've practiced twice now. We were actually in the arena that we'll play in today. So that was great to kind of get in there, get a little familiar with the uh, the grounds and the atmosphere, what it's going to be like. Uh, reminded us a lot of Florida Gulf Coast, kind of the size of the arena and stuff like that, which again is where we started this journey. So, um, you know, we're excited to face a, a, a very good Oklahoma State team from the Big 12 with the reigning Big 12 coach of the year on the team. And a and a post player that's uh, kind of up for every award that is out there nationally. Um, obviously a very, very talented player. Uh, and then they have a point guard too, Jamie Asbury. That's Natasha Mack. And they have a point guard too, Jamie Asbury, who's had a phenomenal year and, and just increased everything she had done from last year to this year. So, um, you know, we're all excited, excited to be here. Hey, Jane, you, you referenced uh, Natasha Mack uh, briefly. Yeah. Uh, it seems to me with your team, it's not that you can necessarily match up with her in the post, but you have to be different and put her in bad positions. Is that how you kind of approach that matchup? Sometimes? I think so. 
Yeah, I don't know that anybody would match up with Natasha Mack. She's such a, she affects the game in so many ways. I mean, she's had a, over 100 shot block, block shots in this year alone. Some people don't get that in a career and are considered pretty good, you know, shot blockers. And then she's also just so athletic. Um, you know, it, it'll be a group effort. It won't be a one person matchup, like who's going to win that matchup. I think that's, that's what's made our team special all year long is, We've got a lot of versatility and a lot of flexibility and we've got to be able to move people around and and kind of use the way she's going to play us to our advantage um, and, and take advantage of some different scenarios with that. And so I think you're exactly right. It's, it's not one single matchup. It's going to be as a group. How are we going to handle her? How are we going to kind of take away her her strengths and or try to take away her strengths, I should say. And then. You know, the big thing is they're one of the best in the, in the nation in, in block shots. And, you know, we talked a lot today about not getting too deep. Like you got to be able to be OK with shooting that mid range jumper and that little pull up. And because if not, you're going to run into her. And, and, you know, how do we how do we play that to our advantage? So I think we're getting our head our heads wrapped around that. And the players are adjusting to that a little bit. Um, you know, we play against some pretty good shot blockers in the ACC. Valencia Myers, I know, is one at Florida State that we've you know, had 10 blocks in a game this past year. So it's not like we haven't seen something similar, but, you know, obviously she's one of the elite at it. Coach, what has preparation looked like for y'all both here back in Winston-Salem and uh, in San Antonio in preparation for the game on Sunday? Well, last week we, we continued practicing. We, we just shortened our practices and tried to make them um, short and intense, kind of keeping us game ready, game shape. Uh, we were working a lot on offensive execution and then just our defensive fundamentals, um, trying to sharpen up some things. There's, you know, always we've got to be able to get better at something, whether it's blocking out, whether it's keeping people off out of the pain or. And so we've, we've done that last week. We did it Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. We took Thursday. Well, Monday we were off Tuesday, Wednesday. Um, this week we practiced Tuesday. We were off Wednesday because of the travel here. And then we've practiced two days here for an hour and a half. We get 90 minutes on the floor. And so yesterday we were over at the Alamo Dome and we focused a lot more in on our defense because that's not where we're playing. Um, today we knew we were going to be in the arena we're playing in. So we did much more of our offense and a bunch of our shooting so we could kind of get used to the goals and the court and that kind of thing. And then tomorrow we're in the exhibition hall because they've got court set up over there. So tomorrow will be a little less. Um, it won't be very much live stuff. It'll be a little bit of shooting. It'll be more like our shoot around. And then we'll do a little bit of position kind of breakdown, just kind of fine tune those last minute details as a refresher to the players of how we're going to take some of that stuff and, and, and apply it into the team setting that we've been working on for two days. But, you know, the big thing is being focused on the details. We want to be, really disciplined in, in, in our details. And, you know, and that's what it's going to take for us to kind of be able to be, be successful and, and, and advance in this thing. Hey coach. So you have a lot of senior players on this team, but they have not been to this stage you have. So are you sharing any little nuggets of guidance or advice with them? Uh, hey, Lauren, thanks for being on here. Uh, I haven't really talked to them about like what this stage, you know, these guys have played in an ACC tournament every year and know kind of what it's like when it's one and done and, you know, knock on wood, but our group has been really good in those kinds of situations with handling the, the, the pressure of that or the nerves of that. And I, you know, I think we're probably getting a little anxious just to get to game day. I know as a coach, I keep saying like tomorrow and it's still not tomorrow, you know, we still have, Saturday before we get to the game on Sunday. But, you know, with the experience we have, I think that that is definitely, um, you know, a good advantage, an advantage for us, this team, um, you know, just showing the younger kids like what it, you know, at the ACC tournament, that was a big deal because, you know, until you've gone to tournament play, you just don't know what that's like. Now we started the season in a tournament with three games back to back to back. And we, you know, the ACC tournament are all preparing us for what the NCAA tournament would be. And now it's just a matter of the players. They know what's at stake. They know what, um, you know, they know what we have to do. And now it's a matter of them continuously just focusing in on that, those short little spurts of uh, moments and not the lot, not the result, but the process. Hey, hey coach. Hey, you, uh, you mentioned challenging the girls to kind of get better at something from yes. the game against Louisville. What does that look like? And what have you seen from your team and, as far as how they've taken to that and what they've improved on? 
Uh, it, it, it was interesting. It's one thing I kind of like to do with them on a regular basis, just to kind of, you know, it's a one-on-one -on -one thing. It wasn't as a team. It was you personally, what do you want to get? What do you really want to focus on in this week? Cause we had that week without a game and we haven't had a week of practice without a game since back before November, before Thanksgiving started. And so sometimes teams can get bored with that. And I didn't want them to get bored. I, we made it very competitive. We split teams up and we ran um, little mini kind of controlled scrimmages. And so within that, my thing with them was we have a week. Now, what are we going to do? We don't want to waste this week. And so each kid's was different. It was from being positive all the time and not getting down on myself to keeping uh, people out of the middle, to being a better finisher, to um, boxing out more, to, you know, it was, and that's what I wanted. I didn't want it to be a one collective thing because one of the things that I've been big on for, since I've gotten awake and our team is if each person gets a little bit better every day, our team collectively gets so much better as we advance and move and as we progress throughout a season. And so, you know, kudos to them because they're really good about focusing in on a couple of things that they work a lot with our position, with their position coaches on those specific aspects and they watch film and they help, help, help them hold them accountable and work on it extra outside of practice time. Hey coach, so I was just going to ask you, I'm going to piggyback off of the couple questions ago, just ask what specifically about Oklahoma State have you been preparing for? Well, you know, they, they play a pressure defense and then they like to play really fast. And so we've, we've really been working on the transition defense. And then, you know, we've been talking about their personnel and, and particularly Natasha Mack and Jamie Asbury, but they also have some other really good surrounding cast members in Lauren Fields and um, Taylor Collins, I believe, is their starting four. And then they've got another position that's kind of rotated in and out a little bit with another member that I think was on the all-rookie team in the Big 12, Keys, um, and, a, and a kid from Australia. I, don't, I won't try to say her name because I might mess it up. But um, but overall, just, you know, expect what they're – what we've been going over their offenses, what they run, how they run it, how they score a lot of their points, who's – you know, who's option A is a three-point shot, who likes to drive – um, and then defensively, you know, what we expect them to do against us, how we're going to score against them, where we want to take advantage of, um, miss, you know, a certain way they're going to play defense. They mix up their defenses. They sometimes switch one through three, one through four. They even switch one through five at times. And so, you know, we've been really working on ways that we could try to get Mac out away from the basket so that she's not just kind of a rim protect protector because that's what she she's really, really good at. And um, and she's different, you know, that's different than a lot of people. And some places don't have somebody that they can call a rim protector. Yes, ma'am. So what do you think of Coach Littell and his coaching style for the Cowgirls? Well, well I have a lot of respect for Coach Littell. When I started my, my coaching career back in uh, whew, a long time ago at University of Missouri, Kansas City, um, I, I knew of Coach Littell when he was uh, involved a little bit more in the junior college and then I also um, just, you know, respect what he's done with that program. He's He's been a multi-year coach of the year. They've been in multiple, I think this is his 10th year. They've been in NCAA tournaments. He's had all Americans come through. Um, you know, I think they just do a really good job um, with, with what they, with what they, who they are. They really know their identity and they play that way. And, and I think he's, you know, he's, he's one of the, he's a great coach. So I think, you know, that part is always, it's, it's nice to be able to go and, and know you're going to play against somebody who's so well-respected. And so, you know, I mean, at this level, every team in this tournament's kind of got that, but um, you know, it's, it'll be, it'll be fun to kind of go up against him. Thank you, coach. Yeah. Thank you. Appreciate it. No. Hey coach. I'm, I'm curious about um, obviously in the news and I know you've had uh, some downtime with, with the accommodations that you've probably been able to keep up with this, uh, the accommodations and the inequity in the women's tournament versus the men's tournament has come to the forefront. I know your strength coach, Jenna, you know, uh, tweeted a couple of times about like the, the equipment the disparity. I know you're really happy to be there. I know you all are, are uh, thankful for the opportunity, but do you all have concerns about the inequities and, and what you've seen? Well, I, I think there's concerns, but I, I think like um, I think what's been tough about this is just the amount of logistics it takes when you bring 64 teams together. Um, you know, it, it's it's you know the, our world has changed with cell phones and you know photos. Like the fact that you know these teams and and we are concerned about that. Like the women's like the goodie bag should be comparable, if not the same. And um, our food and our hotel has been good. Like, I don't, I don't, I haven't heard a lot of complaints from our players. Um, so I think you're at the mercy there a little bit of your lodging situations and, you know, do we have buffets? No, but I don't know if we really miss the buffets. Like, you know, again, there's some things I just, 
you know, the, I think the weight room part was probably one of the biggest things that people just drastically saw the difference and was like, whoa, um, you know, I think logistically, when you start trying to think about how you're getting 64 teams through, through an, an, a weight room space, there were just a lot of things and, and on Lynn Holzman and Nina King and their committee has done a phenomenal job of trying to put this thing together and trying to make it as great as, as great as it can be. And I think they've had to work really closely with San Antonio. And so some of the logistics there were some of the restaurants and being able to order and not have a manpower because people are on furlough and now this, this, the state's opened up. And so there's just so many things that go into that. So, you know, our team, we're, you know, we're obviously we're very grateful to be here and we want all that, but we also want to make sure we, we keep in perspective what we are here for. And that is to, to win, to win games. And we want to, you know, represent Wake Forest in the best way we possibly can and know that, you know, I think there's some good discussions going on out there. And I do know that there's already been some action taken to try to correct some of those things. Um, and so, you know, it's, it's not a perfect situation for anyone um, because of COVID. Uh, you know, usually we would be here and you could go, our kids could go outside the rooms anytime they want. They'd be able to interact with their families when their families get here and they can't, but that's, you know, we couldn't do that at the ACC tournament. Our kids couldn't have any interaction with their family there either, just to, you know, to really try to keep this bubble like atmosphere. So we don't have, you know, players getting tested positive and not being able to play and compete. And I know that would break any and all of our hearts if we had one kid get went down. So. Coach, Thanks, given, it. Yeah, thank you. And given everything you just explained, it's still not the first time we've seen disparities between the accommodations for the men's and women's game. So how do you and your team or even us as media members go about trying to close that gap of equality? Well, I think some of it is the awareness of it. And that's, you know, that's, it's definitely a hot topic on social media as, as we've all seen. And, you know, and, you know, I think in years past, you may have not seen it because I, I don't know why you wouldn't have seen the difference if, because I mean, I, I mean, our kids got here and we got a bag from the NCAA. We're going to take a picture of what's in it. And I mean, I sent it to my daughter and said, this is what you're getting. And, you know, and so it was as simple as that. And then when you saw what the men were posting, then it was like, well, whoa, wait a second. And so I think the awareness piece is big. It's just making people aware that this, this is going on and in and, and the NCAA, you know, it's, it's got to try to do a better job with like making those decisions together. And one of the things we talked about last night, we had a big call last night with a lot of the coaches and stuff and the, and Lynn Holzman and Nina King was on the preparation part, have a strength coach on the committee. That's talking about what we're going to need when we get there, have a director of operations, a couple of those people, cause they're the ones that deal with the food issues. Like every road trip we go on, I'm not dealing with the food. Liv Bresnahan, who is a rock star for us. I mean, we've got smoothies everywhere we go. We've got food and and they've been doing this all year with COVID. And some of them have done a phenomenal job. Again, like we have, we've done a great job with it. So like there's a, a little bit of a trust factor to use the people that are having to do it day in and day out to help you do your job better. And I think that part was something that maybe we didn't really realize was gonna would have been so beneficial on the front end. And so we talked about that last night. And so I think you'll see, you'll see a lot of change moving forward. And that's all we can hope for is we all got to be a part of creating change. And I think, you know, in today's age that this group and these, this generation wants to be a part of change. And so they're not afraid. They're not afraid to sit back and, you know, and just kind of like accept it. And that's the big thing. We can't accept it. We have to continue to bring it to the forefront to make it known, but not, not become just complaining about it. I think it's more of this is what it is. How do we fix it? How do we make it better? There's a solution to everything. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks, Lauren. And then coach, I, if you don't mind, I kind of want to go just in a little bit of a different direction. Okay. Um, do you have any, you know, fear that there's going to be any anxiety going into this game um, that y'all, you know, just not being on this stage before might come out a little flat just because of fear and worries and concerns about, you know, being on a bigger stage now, or do you think y'all are just going to come out like it's any normal day? Well, you know, I, th I think for the most part, we're just going to be grateful to go out there and play again. You know, this, th this group has been grateful for every single day we've gotten. 
Um, and that's one of the joys of coaching this group of young ladies is whether it's been practice or game day, they've been just grateful to be out there. And so now you got a chance to go play another game. And that's what we got to keep it about. It's a, it's another game. It's all it is. It's another game. Yeah. It's on the biggest stage and we've been here and, but we've been on road trips before. And when the ball goes up, I think, you know, that you start playing today, we got up and down a little bit just to kind of, cause we haven't played in two weeks, basically since we played Louisville, um, um, and so we wanted to be two weeks Friday, I guess. So I, you know, I think the young, the, the kids, once you, once the ball goes up and you get your juices flowing, you start, you know, you, you just, that, that adrenaline takes over and it's just what you've been doing since you were five, six, seven years old. So, um, you know, if they're nervous, they won't tell me, <laughs> I'm sure, uh, maybe warm ups they might be a little bit, but, you know, I think both teams could be that a little bit. Cause I know Oklahoma state hasn't been back to the, been to the dance in a while either. So, you know, it's, it's, you know, I don't know if either team has somebody on their team that's been yet. And so like, that's, that might be a unique situation. Now they're, they're seniors maybe, but I know Natasha Max only been there two years. Um, so I do think you've got that, that kind of going in both teams favors in this certain matchup. Anything else for coach? All right. Thanks coach. Yeah. Thank you guys so much. Appreciate it. Go Deeks. Thank you, Kat. Thank you. All right. And now we'll open it up for questions for senior point guard uh, Gina Conti. If you want to start, just uh, make sure to state your name uh, ahead of time. Hey, Gina, this is Essex there. I'm with the old Golden Black here at Wake Forest. Um, I'm honestly going to pose the same question to you as I did to Coach Hoover. Do you think you, you yourself or anyone on the team, just y'all being in March Madness for the first time in a long time, uh, going to have any fears or concerns or any uh, anxiety going into the game? Yeah, so kind of like same thing Coach is saying, but no, I would say just another game to all of us. Um, yeah, it is one of the one of the bigger like the biggest stages, arguably. But I mean, we played in the ACC tournament. You know, we talked to the um, younger players on the team about that and just being like, you know, one and done. Like that's that is what it is. But um, you know, as you saw, like our freshmen, especially in the ACC tournament, performed really well on that. So that looks like it's going in our favor, but. No, so I think that, you know, just the nerves of being excited, you know, as, as every game, like going into every game, I'm just super excited to play. And I think that's the same, that's the same for all my, my teammates. So, um, you know, and being in the NCAA tournament is super exciting. You know, I've never been. Um, so just that feeling too. And just like another game and ready to play. Gina, Les Johns with uh, Demon Deacon Digest. Thanks for your time. Uh, what do you know about Oklahoma State? What do they do well? And how do you hope to exploit them? Yeah, so Oklahoma State is a great team. You know, we've been preparing for them. And, um, you know, they have two key players, Natasha Mack and um, Asbury, their, their um, point guard. So, you know, they're a team that likes to push and transition. And we really locked in just on our defensive, like what we need to do defensively and how we can play off each other. And it's not just a one-on-one -on -one matchup. It's everybody collectively and how we can, you know, stop those key players together and, and the rest of their team. Um, so really just like focusing on the scouting report and what the coaches tell us and just locking into that is what we're going to do as a team. And then, um, and also just pay attention to what we do and know what we do best and, and, and use that to our advantage. How do you limit the impact of Mac who, you know, averages a double double has like a million block shots a season. She impacts the game in so many ways. How do you kind of shrink her impact? Yeah, I would just say we, we know, from learning about like the player she is and just on the defensive side, you know, with our, with my teammates and I just not making it a one-on-one -on -one show, you know, having collectively us playing defense as a team. Um, that way it's not just a one-on-one -on -one matchup. And then on the offensive end, you know, cause she has a great shot blocker making reads as a player, like playing basketball and knowing that, yeah, she does block shots. So we're not going to just drive right into her and shoot a layup, you know, it's like make reads off that, try to try to bring her outside the paint and, and make the dump pass or create shots for my teammates, specifically um, me, but just moving the ball, you know, Hi, Gina. It's Lauren Walsh from WXII. Uh, obviously, you guys want to be playing your best basketball in March. That's how you got here. So what does playing your best basketball look like for Wake Forest in this upcoming game? Yeah, um, I would say playing our best basketball is, you know, everybody locking in on the scattering report and, and knowing what we need to do and staying focused and keeping our mind on the game. And that, that's what's next. And then offensively, I would just say moving the ball, um, making that extra pass and look, getting it inside to um, outside looks, you know, so that way we can we can be a threat from outside the three inside the paint and just keep moving, keep moving the ball and pushing pace um, offensively. 
Hey, Gina, uh, Eddie Hughes with Spectrum News. What's the anticipation like for you as a player and your teammates? You know, it's been so much time in between games. You're ready for this, this game uh, on Sunday against Oklahoma State. What's the anticipation like for you guys? Yeah, so, you know, we've had some time um, since we knew who our matchup was being Oklahoma State. And it's just more time, more time to, you know, watch film, um, watch their games, uh, watch with my individual, like my player development coach, um, watching scout with her, um, just seeing what I need to do better, learning, learning what that looks like and just talking with the teammates. Like, you know, we have time so we can, we can FaceTime being in the um, different rooms and stuff and just like talk about playing and just, it's exciting. Cause like the longer you wait, the more excited you are. Um, that's how we all feel. So we're, we're just ready for Sunday and we're super excited. What was the main difference for you from years past where this team didn't have as much success to, you know, you sitting now in San Antonio getting ready to play in Wake Forest first March Madness game since 1988? Yeah, I think that it's just a process. Um, and, I, and I think, you know, as the years have went on, we've all just kept like buying into, you know, the, the like coaches product and coaches system and different things like that. And just bringing the younger players along with us and really just the connection we've had this year, spe specifically being different and just finding different ways to communicate with our teammates because we weren't able to hang out with each other um, in each other's rooms because of the COVID protocols at the beginning of the year. So really just being able to find different ways to communicate with my teammates and us having this like closeness, um, this bond and just learning each other, I think is definitely something that's played a major role into specifically this year, making it to the tournament. What's uh, what's the trip been like for you so far, Gina? What's, what's San Antonio been like, uh, the travel and the experience? Um, I know the protocols are kind of stringent. So what have you been doing to stay, stay busy? Yeah, so I've never been to Texas. So I was pretty um, interested to see what it was like. Um, it's really pretty, it's nice here. Um, but yeah, so we've been in our hotels and I have a balcony, which is nice. I know a bunch of my teammates have balconies too. So I've actually sat out on the porch. I was like, wow, I need like coffee to go along with it. It'd be cute. But <laughs> no, so like just using the balcony, being able to, um, just do that. And then also like when we go to get tested and stuff at the convention center, which is down the street, we walk there and we have like police escorts. So they keep it really safe, um, you know, away from like other people that are just in the city. So it's been it's been really nice, you know, and then like with our buses, using three different buses to travel and then having like the space between teams and all that. So um, it's been a different experience, but just like this year, I think, you know, we just have adjusted and it's really cool. It's, it's awesome. Like, I don't know, it's different. The, the river walk, like we, when we walk, we're able to see like boats and stuff. So it's been, it's been really cool. Anything else for Gina? All right. Thanks guys. Thank Thanks, you guys. Gina. Thank you, Gina. Appreciate it. Thanks.